All right. In this video, we prove a representer theorem which gives the justification for applying the kernel method to regression problem in general. The theorem goes as follows. Suppose we have a kernel function k on x, which induces the corresponding reproducing kernel Hilbert space hk. And we are given a data set x1, x2, and so on up to xn. And we have two functions l and psi. The function l takes n variables which correspond to the data points and the function psi takes one variable. It's a non-decreasing function and used as a regularizer. Now we want to minimize the sum of these two functions. l takes the variables f of x1, f of x2, and so on, up to f of xn, where f is some function in the Hilbert space. Plus, uh, the function psi takes the norm of f as its argument. The representer theorem says, for this minimization problem, we may assume the optimal function f to have this form which is a linear combination of the reproducing kernels parameterized by the data points. Okay, let's prove this. So, the first thing we do is to define a subspace of the Hilbert space that is spanned by the reproducing kernels parameterized by the given data points. And so let this M be a subspace of the reproducing kernel Hilbert space spanned by these reproducing kernels. And then let P be the projection operator onto that subspace. Okay. And let F be an element of this Hilbert space, so it's a function and evaluate this function at xi, where xi is one of the data points. Since this function f is an element of this reproducing kernel Hilbert space, f of xi is equal to the inner product between f and kxi. Of course, this kxi is uh, the reproducing kernel parameterized by xi. So this inner product is defined in this Hilbert space, and from now on, for simplicity, we just ignore, omit this subscript. And using the orthogonal decomposition, this f can be decomposed into two parts, p, f, and 1 minus p, f. So this p, f is the projection onto the subspace m, and 1 minus p, f is the projection onto the, the orthogonal complement of M. Anyway, so we can uh, distribute this to PF times KXI and 1 minus PF times KXI. Now, this part, this is an element of the orthogonal complement of M and this is an element of M obviously. So this inner product should be equal to zero. So therefore, this is equal to pf times kxi. And this is equal to pf evaluated at xi. Therefore, the function f, as long as it is evaluated at one of the data points, it is equal to pf. So f is equal to pf on the data points, data set. So that means the function L of pf of x1, pf of x2, and so on, and pf of xn. So this value is equal to L of f of x1, f of x2, and so on, f of xn. 
So the value of the function L doesn't change if we use PF instead of F itself. On the other hand, if we calculate the norm squared of F, of course this norm is the norm of this Hilbert space, but we omit the subscript for simplicity. And if we use the, the orthogonal decomposition, this is PF plus 1 minus PF squared. And if we expand this, we have PF norm squared plus 2, uh, the inner product, PF and 1 minus PF plus uh, 1 minus PF norm squared. But this is, of course, 0 because PF and 1 minus PF, they are orthogonal. So this is 0, and this is, of course, uh, non negative. Therefore, we have this inequality. The norm of F is less greater than or equal to the norm of PF. Okay, so PF norm less than or equal to F norm. Therefore, uh, since the function psi is monotone, by assumption it's monotone, uh, non-decreasing, we have uh, psi of norm of PF is less than or equal to psi of norm F. Therefore, we have the following inequality. So L of PF of X1, PF of X2, and so on, and PF of Xn, plus psi of norm of pf. This is less than or equal to L of f of x1, f of x2, and so on, f of xn, plus psi of norm of f. Recall that we were trying to minimize this function with respect to the function f. And the function pf gives a lower bound of that target function. Therefore, we may assume that f lives in the subspace spanned by uh, the reproducing kernels parameterized by the data points. That is, uh, the linear combination of these reproducing kernels, k, x, j and we are done. So this theorem gives a justification for applying the kernel method to uh, regression problems in general. In the case of regression problem, this function L is the error function. So L of f of x1 and so on, f of xn, may be of this form, sum over j from 1 to n, and some function g, so instead of f, let's write it as g, and x j minus lambda j squared. So it's an error function. So we are trying to model the value of lambda by uh, function g of x. And this function psi is called a regularization term or regularizer, and it is used for avoiding overfitting. For example, if we want to fit a data set, let's say x here, lambda here, data set like this, we can fit this data set exactly if we find the function like this. However, this is an overfit uh, because if new data set comes in, like, uh, like let's say this one or this one, then the deviation from the red line becomes larger. So this is not a good idea. And we usually want to find a smoother function like this one. Okay, so the difference between this red line and the blue line 
is usually reflected in the norm of the function. If the function oscillates a lot, then the norm becomes larger. If the function is smoother, then the norm is usually smaller. Therefore, we can reflect our intention to prefer smoother function by this regularization term, which is a function of the norm of the function to be optimized. Okay, that's all for this video. See you next time. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. See you next time. Bye.